Hopefully this doesn't fall. <clears throat> I believe co-owning gear might be one of the most underrated hacks for quickly leveraging your financial situation if you're working in the film industry. Especially in a year where you have a potential recession coming in, being over leveraged and underpaid is a problem that a lot of filmmakers may find themselves worrying about. And splitting up that equity is actually a surprisingly beneficial practice and I wanna show you how. I have notes, but uh, I would recommend just getting out your own pen and paper and doing this yourself with whatever numbers you have and see if it doesn't work out for you. So the basic premise is this. Let's say you're buying some larger piece of film equipment. It really could be anything, but for the sake of this example, we're gonna use something like a Alexa Mini or a Venice, and the rough number that I've been using is $70,000. <clears> so you have an initial $70,000 capital outlay, which you are probably financing, you may be able to pay in cash, but either way, you're leveraging out this situation that we now have a $70,000 outlay, which we are going to exchange for rental income and then equity in the asset that we have acquired. Now, depending on exactly what that is, we're gonna use the rough uh, rental number of $1,500 a day, cause that feels reasonable to me. And we're going to assume that we work a decent number of days, but that we're not actually flying. I think it's always healthy to underestimate the number of days you're gonna do on something like this, especially when you're solo and especially when it's new to you. So let's say that you end up renting that camera out for 30 days in your first year of ownership. $1,500 times 30 days gets you to $35,000. That's not right, $45,000, that's right. I'm reading the wrong numbers. Let's say you buy this camera, you rent it out for 30 days, and at $1,500 a day, that gets you $45,000, which is a good chunk of change. Depending on the terms on your loan, you're probably ahead of the curve, and you have some equity in your camera now, which is really nice. So you've made $45,000. Again, you've probably paid most of that back if you didn't buy it cash, so you're not really ahead um, in pocket at that point, but, Upside is you only have $35,000 left to pay. And then, so if you clear that again, let's say we do more days in the next year, now you're up and now we're, we're playing with funny money. And so you can actually clear that 70K gap pretty quickly by doing those days. Now, most people that I talk to don't like the idea of co-owning because they perceive it as splitting their rental share in half. And the reason that that is short-sighted is you are not taking account to uptime on the equipment because most equipment owned by most filmmakers spends most of its time sitting around doing nothing. I'm certainly guilty of this. I have a A7 IV, an A1, an FX9, and an FX6, and a whole bunch of other stuff, and probably 300 days of the year it spends in my basement. And it's sort of a bummer because one, I would just love for it to get used because it's great stuff, and two, it's definitely not really performing as a financial asset when it's just sitting around. So uptime becomes a factor and having a co-owner, another vested interest can help you mitigate the uptime problem. So let's go back and say we have the same gear. We're going to split a camera. I did this with a friend with an Aria Mira a few years ago and we're gonna keep the same numbers. So we split it 50-50, we each put in $35,000. Now the initial benefit is your capital outlay is half as much. So your loan is half as big, your payments are half as big each, if you're taking out a loan, you are just less leveraged. And if you have the ability to clear like a 70K business loan at this moment, you can go out and buy $35,000 or, or another $70,000 potentially between the two of you in lenses or something. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm saying that you could because now you have utilized this halving of your original capital. Um, and so the way we did it, the way that I would personally recommend doing it, I'm no business expert on these things, but it worked out well for us, was to say, whenever the camera rents, we just split it 50-50. Um, and so in this scenario, if we're using that $1,500 point, you each get $750. And so I think this is where people get hung up, is they go, okay, well I put in half as much money, but I get back half as much money, so doesn't it sort of come out in the wash? And the answer is no, because in the initial scenario, let's say you did 30 days. So that would get you $22,500 in this situation. So you put in uh, 35,000, you got back 22,000. But if your partner's working close to the same amount you are, in this point we'll call it equitable, you have 60 days of uptime. So that 750 times 60 days means you're still making $45,000 in rentals. 
but you are each making $45,000 in rentals, which means the camera's totally paid off year one, as opposed to half paid off. So you spend half as much money, the camera's totally paid off, you make the same amount of money, and now you have a quicker turnaround time to potentially leverage yourself into other assets. Now, the math continues going forward. So say the next year you do another 30 days each and the rate stays the same. Well, now you have made um, $90,000 in two years off of your $35,000 investment. Where if you had done it solo, doing 30 days a year, you have made, let's see, 45,000, $90,000 in two years off a $70,000 investment. So your ROI delta becomes significantly greater because now instead of having this like 15% uh, or, or let's say 20K bump over the net asset price and like depreciation can factor in there, your, your camera's probably still worth a lot. So say two years later, you could probably sell it for 60. And if you made 90, um, you know, then you get back that 60, it really only cost you 30 and you end up making net 150, right? Is that right? I'm doing quick head math now. Um, but that situation where you have a second person and you have increased your uptime on the asset, that combination of reduced capital outlay reduces your risk, again, reduces your payment, reduces your stress to get on so many jobs then your uh, turnaround time, you actually pay the whole thing off faster if you want to, or you're just in positive cash flow sooner. If you're gonna stretch, stretch the loan out, which you totally can, um, you're probably ahead of the game sooner where instead of maybe having $500 after your payment each month, you've actually got $1,500 after your payment each month. And that's a significant change. Um, and then on top of that, again, you're just way net positive sooner. So if you did have to liquidate your camera sooner, you're paid off of your capital investment. Your risk is way lower. So if in two years you decide to sell it and upgrade or buy the other person out, whatever else it is, you're just in a way better position. So this is something that I really believe in and have not been in a position in our local community to really take advantage of as much as I would like, but I would highly recommend it to other filmmakers out there. I think a lot of people are obsessed with this idea of owning all their own stuff. And if you're the kind of person who shoots all the time and is dealing with um, smaller pieces of gear, you just like having your own stuff, whatever else, like there's definitely reasons to own your own stuff. I'm not saying not to own your own stuff. I'm just saying that I think that it's a lot of the times we have redundant equipment sitting around too, where you go into a community and there's like four of the same camera. Um, and those assets could just be way better utilized. So I'm a big believer in people connecting, people sharing things, and I feel like there's this subconscious idea that somehow if I went in on this together that I would be shorting myself, and you're actually not. I can't find any way in the math that you don't benefit from co-owning something with someone. So I'd be curious to know what you guys think of this. Um, I know it's a very like niche conversation and not one that I've seen many people have. I'd love to see you do the math too on whatever you maybe own or are thinking about owning and just consider this. What if we treated these things less as individual uh, owned tools and more as assets and then we could share equity in them across the community. I mean, you could even go in with four people in your environment if you wanted on something, um, because I've seen that be really beneficial to a lot of people and really help them out as they're building their business without having to put it all on your own shoulders. Because at the end of the day, I feel like we've fragmented a bit into this hyper individualized culture around filmmaking, especially in the creator economy. And there is something to be said, in my opinion, about the value of teamwork and the value of working as a team, the value of owning things as a team, the value of your ability to create together. And you don't have to do this all alone. For the first nine years of my career, community was critical. And I would love to see more of that uh, in the world. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this made sense. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.